towards India's journey towards universal health care. Dr. Sudhakar Shinde, CEO Ayushman Bharat Maharashtra and in charge for MJPJ scheme. Ladies and gentlemen, let's turn to listen to the young and dynamic policymaker who has transformed the healthcare insurance process in Maharashtra by initiating series of initiatives. I have great pleasure in inviting on stage Dr. Sudhakar Shinde. CEO Mahatma Jyotiba Phule Jan Arogya Yojana, MPJ. Dr. Sudhakar Shinde is a 40-year-old dynamic IRS officer. He has held charges of various departments in the government of Maharashtra since the year 2006. He has been born and brought up in the rural hinterlands of Maharashtra and has throughout done his education from government schools. He graduated from the most prestigious government medical college of Pune and holds a MBBS degree. Post his graduation, he started his career in the sector of pharmaceutical research wherein he worked with various MNCs and gained a rich experience in the sector. Post his stint with the private sector, he took the most prestigious civil services examination in the year 2006 and has since been serving the public of Maharashtra through his unparalleled work in various government departments across the state. He is one of those officers who aims to make a remarkable contribution with his relentless efforts as an imminent part of the government. His aim is to promote utmost transparency and honesty in the working system so as to maximize the benefits of his services to the public. His surprise transfers across departments have been a manifestation of his honesty and fearlessness in his style of working. We salute you, sir. It was a result of this characteristics that his latest transfer from Panvel Municipal Corporation made headlines in the media reports this year. He has won hearts of the public wherever he has served. This has been evident when at the time of his transfer from PCMC, residents of Panvel ran campaigns and online petitions to cancel his transfer orders. He has been fearless in his approach and has worked with the single-minded aim to benefit the public from his actions and initiatives. He has conducted various raids, busted illegal sand mining, and forefronted the most sensitive investigations to ensure that miscreants are given their share of punishment. He pioneered the campaign of banning plastic bags in his department, which has now been replicated by all departments across the state. He has famously bagged the reputation of being a no-nonsense bureaucrat and believes in going on the field and being accessible to the people he serves, whether face-to-face, -face, on phone, emails, or messages. Again, a big salute to you, sir. He is currently posted as the CEO of Rajiv Gandhi Jeevandai Arogya Yojana Society and is very efficaciously managing the largest state-level health scheme with 2.23 crore beneficiary families. He has now successfully integrated the state scheme Mahatma Jyotiba Phule Jan Arogya Yojana with the center's flagship health scheme Ayushman Bharat. The schemes have been tactfully merged to implement the new model along with ensuring continuity of benefits to the beneficiaries of the existing state scheme, which is also the largest and is being viewed as a role model by other states. Within few months, he has effortlessly grabbed the nuances of the insurance model, TPAs and many more, and has completely taken charge of the health scheme. He has already taken steps to promote transparency and weed out stakeholders indulging in maleficence activities. He has continued to make headlines in his current posting as well. He proactively conducted midnight raids in various suspected impanel hospitals with TPS and insurance companies. Within three days, he suspended approximately 10 hospitals indulging in wrong practices, displaying his philosophy of zero tolerance towards fraud. 
His efforts at effectively managing the scheme have been discussed at the central platform as well during meetings of National Health Authority. We look forward to his valuable inputs today to enlighten us with his experience of effectively managing the largest state level health scheme in the country. Now I request Dr. Sudhakar Shindeji to address us. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the generous and quite lengthy introduction. Today, within the time allocated to me, I would like to touch upon various aspects of Ayushman Bharat, which is the world's biggest health insurance scheme. Ayushman Bharat progress report, if you look at the figures that we have achieved in last three years, Ayushman Bharat was launched in India on 18th September 2018 by Honorable Prime Minister from the state of Jharkhand. Maharashtra was one of the state which was running its own schemes before launch of Aishman Bharat and we have successfully integrated the scheme with Aishman Bharat from the day it was launched. So far across the country, Aishman Bharat has issued cards to its beneficiaries to the tune of 16.35 crores. We have uh, more than 2.09 crore admissions under the scheme and we have spent more than 25,000 crores on treatment of these Aishman Bharat beneficiaries. We have world's largest network of empaneled hospitals, around 20,000, 23,000 hospitals empaneled across the country. Uh, we have 24-7 call center. The, the toll-free number is 14555 and so far we have received more than 76, 77 lakh calls on this call center. Uh, like India being a very vast and very geographically different country, the healthcare infrastructure is not available in all the states as it is available in some few states. So we have a very, uh, very good concept of portability of patients from one state to the other state, whether it is on account of their livelihood or it is on account of availability of medical services. So, so far we have 2.5 lakh people who have got treatment outside their state and we have paid around 548 crore rupees toward their treatment. One of the major uh, aspect of the scheme is that it has been very, uh, there, is a, there is a very good uh, share of uh, females getting benefit under the scheme. Roughly 47.5% uh, gender parity is there vis-a-vis uh, -vis female and males. So far journey of the scheme, as I told you, the scheme was launched on 23rd September 2018 and we were taking off. We had initially 10,000 hospitals, then we touched upon 15,000, then in, uh, in the month of around May 2020, we had 20,000 hospitals and currently we have uh, more than 23,000 hospitals. Similarly, our cards were issued uh, very slowly in the initial phase, maybe 5 crores initially, then 10, then 12, and now we have uh, more than uh, 16 crore cards issued to its beneficiaries. Also the treatment that people got benefit is initially it was 50 lakh and today we are boasting of more than 2.09 crore beneficiaries who have actually taken the treatment and I, I already told you the treatment cost is around 25,000 crores. Relevance of PMJY for India's poor, you can, you can very well see from these graphs that the hospitalization rate is, is shown in blue and, and the the chronic morbidity is shown in red color and you can very well see the gap. 60 million people of India every year, it is seen that, it is seen that 5 percent of India's population is pushed below poverty line every year because of the catastrophic out-of-pocket cash expenditures they have to do on the, uh, their health care. People, around 78 percent of people in India do not have any health insurance or reimbursement of health um, e expenditures from any source, whether it's the employer, whether, whether it's their own group insurance scheme or their personal health insurance schemes. We have increased burden of non-communable diseases in the country from 30% to 55% in last 25 years. Epidemi epidemiological trends are showing that there is more need of um, non-communicable disease treatments. And so 
we are expanding our packages more and more towards uh, non uh, more and more towards non communicable diseases chronic morbidity like incidence of chronic morbidity between poor poorest 40% to the richest 40% is 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 comparable hospitalization rate is also significantly lower in poorest because they are just not able to access or they are not able to afford the hospitalization Salient features of Ayushman Bharat. First is the scheme targets to cover 10.47 crore families. That's around roughly more than 50 crore population. So I'm calling it world's biggest health insurance scheme. The population covered under the scheme is more than population of any other countries in the Western world. It's a it's the largest health assurance scheme. Sometimes the schemes are run on assurance mode by the states without involving insurance companies. So the basic purpose is to assure beneficiary for its intended health benefits. Health cover up to 5 lakh rupees per family per year. And there is no cap on the family size. We have families with more than 13, 14 family members in each family. Implemented in insurance mode, trust mode and mixed mode. Maharashtra is implementing scheme in hybrid mode. That means some part of scheme is 1.5 lakh cover is through insurance company and above that we pay directly because we have analyzed and we have seen that if you get the bids for 5 lakh cover then we end up spending more so without hampering the benefits of the intended beneficiaries we have made this financial arrangement to have a hybrid model secondary and tertiary care hospitalization and it it covers all pre-existing illnesses if you as a person go to a individual health insurance plan then the health insurance company will ask for a medical checkup whether you have any prior illness or not. But here the scheme is available to everybody who is eligible, eligible beneficiary under the scheme. Unique portability feature, I told you that across the country anybody can go in the empanel hospitals and get the treatment. It's completely paperless and totally cashless scheme. What has been impact of the Ayushman Bharat? I will explain these few uh, parameters. United sorry untied funds with public hospitals as there are government hospitals uh, in the country which give uh, most of the treatment free but there are certain component in government hospitals also where people have to bear uh, expenditures out of their pockets we have empaneled these hospitals also and there they get every uh, part of the treatment including medicines blood investigations uh, implant transplant free through the scheme and this has been able to inject a lot of money in the public health hospitals and they are using this money to upgrade their infrastructure for the betterment of the whole country. Opportunity for private in investment. There were certain areas in the country where healthcare was not uh, attracting good private investments, especially in B and C type of cities. But because of our scheme, people have come forward and investing in more and more healthcare infrastructure in B and C cities. Of course, yes, city healthcare infrastructure cost and economics is different ball game altogether we have active participation of the private sector as i told you more than 50 percent of hospitals empaneled in the scheme in maharashtra we have thousand hospitals empaneled under scheme and more than 75 percent hospitals are from private sector we have standardization of packages treatment rate and treatment protocols as well the standard treatment which is available in Tata Cancer Hospital is being followed across all 250 empanel cancer treatment hospitals in my state under state scheme as well as Ayushman Bharat scheme. The strategic purchasing leads to economies of scale. Government hospitals and private hospitals have been able to uh, procure the quantities so that they are getting benefit of economies of scale and there is reduction in the cost. Of course, they have done away with many intermediaries uh, to reduce this cost. But the ultimate beneficiary is the patient. Health data and research monitoring and evaluation in India, it was very difficult to have such a humongous data. Now we have data, we analyze the trends, we analyze the disease burden patterns and we strategize accordingly. We change our packages, we change the package rates. Convergence of schemes on common health platform. As you are aware that there are many other schemes which have been floated by government of India other state governments and there are some statutory uh, schemes like employee state insurance scheme, construction workers health care benefit scheme, 
and many other schemes, we have been able to converge these schemes, like Central Government Health Scheme has been converged with this Aishman Bharat platform, or we are, we are implementing all these schemes through the empaneled hospitals. States and Indian territories are expanding their beneficiary base. As I told you, Aishman Bharat has around 50 crore beneficiaries across the country. Maharashtra has around um, 82 lakh families. Maharashtra has 2.5 crore families. Out of these 2.5 crore families, 82 crore families are beneficiaries of Aishman Bharat. But Maharashtra is first state in the country which has given universal health coverage to all its beneficiaries based on the ration card. Maharashtra provides free health care insurance benefits to orange ration card holders, yellow ration card holders, white ration card holders and also people who are having Antyodaya and Annapurna ration cards. If some people do not have ration cards, then we have facility to avail the scheme with the help of Tehsildar certificate. One letter from Tehsildar that this person is domicile of Maharashtra is enough to get him or herself enrolled in the scheme. Incentive for quality health care, we have been indulging in the practice of grading various hospitals depending upon their infrastructure, depending upon the feedback of the patients, whether there is grievance from the patient, some out of pocket expenditure and we are grading them continuously. The grading is dynamic, hospitals are graded A, B and C and hospital get around 100%. 90% and 80% of package rates depending upon their grading. So if somebody has good infrastructure, they are incentivized for that. And if they are not able to maintain, they will be penalized for that. This is the beneficiary base. I told you across the, across the country from Goa to Uttarakhand, this is the percentage of uh, beneficiaries in the scheme, around 13.44 crore families. The cards, like everybody who is part of this Aishman Bharat scheme is based on their cards and these cards are uh, generated uh, through some agencies like UTISSL and there is some another agency called as, um, there, there are many other government of India agencies which are issuing these cards. Initially the card issue was very less but because of COVID we could not perform and after like last year we have picked up again for the issuing of the cards and we have issued more than 16 crore cards and this card is not the rate limiting factor for getting the benefit. If somebody does not have a card, they can go to the empaneled hospital and they can generate their card there and therein and they can get the treatment. This is the empanel, number of empaneled hospitals. As, as I told, initially when we launched, we had 6,000 hospitals and today we have 23,000 hospitals. And hospitals like uh, in, in Mumbai, if I want to tell you, the hospitals like Lifeline Group of Hospitals is on our panel. The hospital like KJ Somaya is on our panel. The hospitals are uh, like HCG Apex Hospital, which provides cancer treatment, is, in, is on our panel. In Delhi, Medanta Hospital is there and people from Maharashtra can go to Medanta and get themselves treated under the scheme. These are the trends like author, authorized hospital admissions that I already explained. Because of COVID, we definitely had impact on non-COVID treatment. But just to explain about the COVID scenario in Maharashtra, Maharashtra is the state which is reported highest number of COVID cases in the country. So far, we have had more than 64 lakh COVID positive cases in our state. I was part of the core team which was managing for the policy and strategizing for, strategizing for the COVID response for the state. In Maharashtra, out of these 64 lakh people, around 25 people, 25 percent people needed the hospital admissions, especially in DCSC and DCS kind of hospitals. Many patients got their got themselves cured at home through home isolation, and some of them were uh, were housed in COVID COVID care center, which is very preliminary kind of setup. But as far as the hospitalization, secondary and tertiary treatment is concerned, out of the 64 lakh, 16 lakh people, around 25% people were admitted in the hospital. And I'm proud to say that I have been able to cater to around 11 lakh people out of the 16 lakh, free of cost under this scheme. This is the largest number in the country. Out of these 16 lakh, 11 lakh were treated free in our empanel hospitals. And out of these remaining 5 lakh people, around 4 lakh people had their own insurance schemes. 
and again maharashtra is the is the state which has more than 8000 packages and claims submitted to the private insurer and the claim amounts to 8000 crores so 4 lakh people got 8000 crore from their private insurance only 1 lakh people or around 1.5 lakh people had not had health insurance scheme or they did not opt to get treatment in our empanel hospitals for those people i have been instrumental to regulate the rates of all private hospitals so maharashtra had a covid treatment across the spectrum people who wanted to be benefiting from our scheme they got benefit from scheme who had their own health insurance coverage they were covered by their own health insurance provider and people who were not with the health insurance coverage and who wanted to take treatment in their hospital of choice we were the first state in the country to regulate the rates and believe me the rates controlled by maharashtra are are the least in the country maharashtra's rates are not less than 20 to 30% of rates charged by other neighboring states so we have been able to provide the best response to the covid pandemic somehow it is not getting over and we are again preparing for the third wave and i don't know whether we'll have to provide uh, like prepare for the fourth wave or not way forward to the ayushman bharat sustaining the mass campaign for beneficiary verification under the scheme as i told you beneficiaries are identified through 2011 census data and they have to uh, be given the health card they have to be made aware that they have certain kind of benefits but states like maharashtra is not based on the scc data i am providing benefits based on the ration card if i am coming to this this conference and talking to some people in the in the state of maharashtra if you are able to provide this information to people who are dependent on you your maids your drivers your known people that there is a scheme in the state of maharashtra which provides free insurance uh, cover and free treatment for almost 1000 different diseases then my purpose of coming here for 2 hours and delivering this speech is is served so please please talk to any people if there is a person who comes to your contact and they say that they don't have money and they need bypass surgery they need valve replacement they need chemotherapy they need radiation they need onco surgery they need hip replacement they need knee replacement they should contact my 24 hour 24 7 call center get their ration card copy get their photo identity let it be aadhar let it be um, this uh, uh, passport let it be the Uh, nationalized bank passbook front page xerox with the photograph let it be the driving license there are 14 different kind of authorized photo identity and with these two documents you get cashless and you get paperless treatment in the scheme <laughs> of course there have been certain instances that although people were paid by government of maharashtra government of maharashtra has paid more than 10000 crores on the scheme for last 7 8 years there were instances that people were charge something more which were they were not supposed to and we have brought this hospital to the book in my tenure i have dm panel 250 of such hospitals from our scheme and they will never be part of the scheme again so we are here to take care of the people's rights there are instances which are happening but we are here to resolve it we have been able to refund more than few crore rupees to the patients from the hospital Uh, collected on account of investigation or some other medicines or some other kind of items my scheme also provides benefit for giving return fare to the patients when they are treated from the hospital if somebody comes for dialysis i will pay 1100 rupees to the hospital for dialysis out of that 1000 rupees 1050 rupees will be for the hospital and hospital will have to pay 50 rupees or 100 rupees to that patient so that that patient can go to his home Uh, with the help of that money of course i don't provide money for the taxi i will be providing money for the uh, state transport bus ticket we are rationalizing healthcare benefit packages there is always difference of opinion between hospitals and us these rates are not affordable and i have certain limits in terms of my budgets and I, whatever i get from the state we have been able to uh, part with our partners that is hospital we deploy Uh, beneficiary facilitation agencies in the empanel hospitals so that if they come they will help them to enroll in the scheme they will help them to find their documents and get the benefit of the scheme we realize synergies in the convergence in the health programs like national health mission uh, pradhan mantri jan aushadhi kendra so that the generic medicines are used under the scheme and the burden on the hospitals also reduced 
strengthen the capacity of state health agencies like me and their dis district implementation units by providing more and more manpower, efficient and transparent claim adjudication process and protocol for the Ayushman Bharat uh, beneficiary hospitals because hospitals are our partners and I am proud to say private insurance companies pay the claims to the hospitals within 90 days or more and my state, my scheme pays to the hospital within 30 days of their claim submission online. So I, I accept that my package rates, my treatment rates are less as compared to private health insurance scheme but my scheme is efficient in terms of giving them the uh, consistent flow of funds increase the monitoring and evaluation of the scheme through joint review missions, that means the state and the center and certain other agencies like WHO and World Bank, they have their consultants giving us inputs. So this is the overview of the scheme. I am here to tell you that friends, there is a scheme launched by Honorable Prime Minister of the country. The scheme is the biggest health insurance scheme in the world, which provides health insurance to more than 50 crore family, 50 crore uh, citizens in the country. They are the most vulnerable and at the bottom of the uh, population pyramid who need the scheme. More and like over and above these national schemes, certain states have their own schemes and those schemes have been combined with this national scheme like my state has Mahatma Jyotiba Phule Jain Arugya Yojana which provides universal health coverage to all its citizens based on the ration cards. The scheme is available in thousand different hospitals empanel across the state and 23,000 hospitals empanned across the country. The scheme is available for 1,000 different secondary and tertiary care packages. The treatment ranges from dialysis, kidney transplant, hip replacement, knee replacement, uh, heart attack, uh, like resolving heart attacks, doing angioplasties, doing bypass surgeries, changing the walls of the heart, brain surgeries, and all kind of important elements, cancer treatment for onco uh, surgery for uh, chemotherapy, for radiation therapy and what, what and what not is there. So there is such a scheme. If somebody wants to take benefit in our scheme, please guide them to dial our 24-7 um, toll-free toll -free number. My toll-free number is one double five three double eight. Please store this number and share it with. If this is shared with one person, that will, be the, that will serve the purpose of the scheme. So this is all about my scheme. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to me and I hope you people act as our messenger and ambassador and provide the benefits of the scheme to the eligible people. I hope nobody needs this benefit but we are in the real world and people do need uh, treatment for different ailments. Thank you so much. Thank you Satya for organizing this uh, conference and your relentless spirit to organize conference during the pandemic. Uh, we must appreciate your efforts and your team's efforts. Thank you so much. Thank you. I never attend any conference and seminar. For me, you come here, it's a proud privilege for me. <laughs> okay, we will tell. So, we shall pass on the message. This is a very vital message for all of us. And we, are, we are grateful we are in the company in the midst of such a great person here. Thank you, Dr. Satya Brahmaji, for inviting me. Right, please come here, sir. Siddhakar Ji here. So, the man behind uh, Aishman Bharat in Maharashtra which has even gone to Delhi and all. Let's give him a huge round of applause, Dr. Sudhakar Sinde. I do talk to all the hospitals, so I talk his name, and they're actually scared. They told, you know, something might come here and there. And it's a small token of appreciation from our side. This is coming from an honest journalist, so there is... A <laughs> No, no, take a photo. Come. Thank you for coming. Now we move on to partnerships and collaborations in an era of uncertain future. After the enlightening discussion and um, 
being addressed by Dr. Sudhakar Shinde ji. Thank you so much, Dr. Sudhakar Shinde ji. Now our speaker is Dr. Satya Vadlamani, chairperson.